Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kate. I'm a micro influencer and I share micro influencer tips and behind the scenes on my channel. So if that's something you are interested in, hit subscribe and like this video. So today we're going to be talking about mistakes to avoid when you first start influencing. Some of these mistakes I've made myself and I just don't want to see other people make them. So let's just get started. Before I jump into the first tip, I will be looking kind of like up past you because my computer is right there and I do not want to miss any of the tips. So I actually just like wrote them all out. But without further ado, let's get into the first tip. So the first thing you should avoid is joining engagement groups. Now, what is an engagement group? I don't even know because I've never joined one, but it's basically fake engagement that you'll get from other girls and it's not organic. And the whole thing is that with your account, you're gonna want organic reach, organic growth, because in the long run, you're going to want an audience of people that actually enjoy your content, that actually are following you because they enjoy your content. You don't want these fake people follow, they're not even fake people, but just fake engagement. They're only engaging with your stuff because you're engaging with theirs, right? So you really wanna find your audience that will support you and follow you for what you actually post and not just for your likes and comments back on their page, right? Also, engagement groups could get your Instagram shut down. Um, Instagram is really like finicky with things and if they notice that you're like spamming something or you're in anything called an engagement group, it will literally shut your account down or limit you. So I wouldn't do it for that reason. So the next thing that you should avoid is switching your strategy too often. So the algorithm needs to get used to your posting schedule just like you do, right? So you need to be posting your same schedule for like probably around two months before the algorithm is even going to understand your posting schedule and it will push your content once it knows your posting strategy. So you wanna be consistent for at least two months before switching anything up. Instagram, along with other apps, does actually reward you for posting consistently and with a strategy by pushing your content out more. So you'll see that as time goes on if you follow your strategy for long enough. And if you switch your strategy too soon, like Instagram's gonna get confused and it's not gonna push your content because it doesn't see you as someone who's following a consistent schedule or strategy. So keep that in mind when starting. Don't get discouraged right away. Just make sure you're showing up consistently, following your strategy, and Instagram in, in return will push your content out to more people. The next thing you wanna keep in mind is that lighting matters. So disregarding lighting is like one of the biggest mistakes you can make. I actually struggled with this in the past. I, it's hard to find good lighting sometimes, especially when you're new at it. So make sure you're shooting in either natural lighting or have a good light source on your face. But anyway, you wanna use natural lighting if possible. Shoot outside in good lighting and everything will turn out really great. I also recommend like getting a tripod and I'll link my tripod down below. My tripod specifically has a ring light attached to it and you can change the settings to different lights. So for me, I can make it like super, bright white. But the better quality that you have, the more drawn people will be to your content. Um, think about when you're scrolling. If someone doesn't have the best lighting, you're going to scroll right past it because it's not eye catching, you know? And when someone does have good lighting and it's really like it pops, like you're like, wow, like, you know what I mean? So keep that in mind. So the next thing that you should avoid is paying for a collaboration. <laughs> Now, if you're truly collaborating with a brand, they will never, ever make you pay for anything, okay? Keep that in mind because a lot of brands will try to trick you and be like, oh, well, all you have to do is pay for shipping costs. No, you should not have to pay for anything. You will either be completely gifted that item 100%, or you will actually be paid to promote the item as well as being gifted those items. So make sure you never pay for anything. This next tip that you need to avoid is not having a business email. 
you don't want to use your personal email for business inquiries, right? Like if a business or a brand wants to click on your email and email you, you do not want it along with all your other emails. You wanna have a specific email to check set aside for brand collabs and business inquiries, stuff like that. And make sure it's an appropriate name and everything too. I actually talked about that in a previous video. Go watch those other videos if you need more micro-influencer advice. You wanna check your email frequently as well. This is something I have a hard time with for some reason. My email gives me anxiety. I don't know, am I the only one? But make sure you do that at least like once a day. The next thing you need to avoid is not having a media kit. So if a brand reaches out to you, you really wanna treat it like a job, right? A job interview. So you wanna have a media kit, which is like your online social media resume. And you wanna showcase your best statistics and showcase your best photos, stuff like that. Um, I'm actually filming how to make a media kit today. The media kit video will be going up Thursday, so stay tuned for that. Um, I will be walking you through how to make a media kit, showing you some of my media kit, and kind of explaining what you wanna put into a media kit. So stay tuned for that. Having a media kit will help you pitch to brands. You wanna make sure you're showcasing who you are, what you offer, all of that stuff. Um, so stay tuned for that video and I will talk way more in depth about media kits. The next thing you need to avoid is not negotiating. You're going to want to negotiate with a brand, whether it's for deliverables, the time allowed, um, when you're getting paid for that collab, how much you're getting paid for that collab, stuff like that. And there will be more on this later on. Just stay tuned. I'm actually still learning how to negotiate. You wanna make sure you know your worth when it comes to working with brands. Are, do you have a very outstanding engagement rate? Do you offer something that someone else doesn't? Do you live in a really awesome, beautiful place to take photos and showcase their products? Stuff like that. So you wanna make sure that you know your worth and you are charging and negotiating with these brands when the time is right. It's absolutely amazing to take on gifted collabs in the beginning to build up your media kit and show that you have worked with reputable brands and you have done brand collabs in the past, but just know that once you grow to a certain point, you should be asking to be paid. Um, this is a job, so treat it as that. Unless you don't want to, that's fine. But um, if it were me, I'd be getting that coin, so. Also, you wanna set your rates and have a rate card, which I will explain in another video, but you wanna know how much you would charge for certain things. Like, how much would you charge for one in-feed carousel post on Instagram? How much would you charge for a reel? You know, how much would you charge for an Instagram post in-feed plus a story? So you need to have those rates in mind when you're negotiating with brands and don't negotiate your lowest number first. Obviously you're gonna wanna start higher because they're always gonna wanna negotiate down. And you might be surprised by what they would actually pay you if you didn't show your numbers first. Which brings me to my next thing is to always ask the brand what their budget for the allocated campaign is at that time before even bringing up a rate because they might be paying you a lot more than you'd ever expect. And obviously the last thing is to negotiate. You've gotta teach yourself how to negotiate with people. It is really hard to get past the whole, oh, I don't wanna ask for money, I feel bad. Negotiating is important. Make sure you're negotiating with brands, whether it's for deliverables, whether it's for the price they're paying for you to shoot that content. Keep it in mind how much you are worth and also have a rate in mind. So make sure you follow those things to avoid like losing money. So the last thing that you should avoid when it comes to growing on Instagram is just the lack of reels. You absolutely wanna be posting reels right now. They are the number one thing being pushed onto the Instagram algorithm. TikTok is blowing up lately and Instagram is trying to kind of copy that with short form video content, as well as YouTube with YouTube Shorts, which I'm just kind of experimenting with lately. So short form video content is like the number one thing going on right now. I love short form video content because I have ADHD and it is really hard for me to sit through a full video. That's why I also put chapters in my videos because 
I have no patience to sit through a video. I hope you do, but I don't. So anyway, reels are the best way to get reach on Instagram, to show your content to new people. Reels basically are pushed onto the explore page more than like anything. And they show your content to all new people, all new eyes. Also, I wanted to explain that Posting reels onto your feed is fine and all. It probably will make it to the Explore page as well. But I have learned that my views go way higher when I don't post it to feed. So there will be an option in Instagram. I'll put a little screenshot right here. Click off of this option that says post in feed because that will push it right to the Explore page, meaning new people, new eyes, higher reach basically. Okay, so those are all the tips I have for you today, but if you would like a part two, like this video and let me know down below. And if you haven't watched my other videos on micro-influencer advice, please check them out. They will definitely help you. Subscribe, like this video, comment anything down below that you need to, and I am here to help with any questions that you have, so leave them down below, and thanks for watching.